And we are back on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're joined now by one of the filmmakers of A Noble Lie on the Oklahoma City bombing movie. That is Holland Van de Neuenhoff, as well as Dale Phillips, one of the members of the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us on, Aaron. Uh, so let's get into the background a little bit. How did this uh, investigative body come about as a response to the official story? And then start to get into what are the things you saw, Mr. Phillips? Well, uh, actually, I didn't know Charles Key at the time that, uh, that the bombing took place. Uh, Representative Charles Key was immediately on top of uh, watching the actions of the government in, case, uh, in the case of the bombing. And I actually, um, of course, um, observed uh, him uh, contending with uh, some of them concerning the facts of the bombing and what took place. And um, he was a rarity, and still is for that matter, in his uh, ability and his desire to seek out the truth in, uh, in uh, occurrences such as that. And I didn't know him at that time, but I told my wife at the time that I wanted to uh, really get to know him because it was very impressive uh, that he had the courage to stand up um, uh, against what were obvious uh, lies. Uh, when, when the bombing took place, um, there was, uh, of course, everybody knows what the building looked like and all that, but there was um, uh, five times when they... Um, stopped the rescue operations uh, to take out armaments and other things that the local news media stated uh, were left in the building and that were taken out. Even the governor stated that they had those kind of things in their possession and were uh, researching them and, and trying to use those to figure out who did it. Well, it wasn't very long after that, that uh, after the uh, feds came in on the second day, that the whole story started changing and uh, Charles started coming against the obvious cover-up and lies and uh, that uh, impressed me and so I got to know him. Uh, went to have lunch with him and talked to him about uh, uh, what to do. He said he wanted to start uh, the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee and um, would consider having me on it so I helped him start it actually and uh, I'm glad that I did. So tell us a little more about your background and when did you first become suspicious of what the media was reporting versus uh, the apparent facts on the ground? Well, the very thing that I just told you, the, the fact that uh, they stopped uh, the rescue operations mm -hmm. um, and uh, to take out armaments. And then when the, uh, the feds came in and, and they never mentioned armaments again, never mentioned other explosives found in the building that the governor actually talked about on TV. But those right. kind of things weren't talk talked about again. It's amazing how they can expect people to just totally forget what they were told yesterday. And for, for that matter, it's amazing how many people do forget. In the case of uh, the six years of investigation that we did, uh, we interviewed a lot of people that we uh, uh, rehashed the beginning day, day and a half of what went on, and they would say to us, Oh, yeah, I remember that the news media did report that uh, they were stopping the, uh, uh, the uh, rescue to do this and to do that. But people will forget real quick, and uh, if you just tell them over and over and over that uh, something is black, they will forget that it was white. Uh, so, Holland, a noble lie has so much laid out about this case, and the bombing investigative committee is just one part of it. Uh, help us draw some of the background picture, how big this lie is, why it's still important today, and then let's get back into the investigative committee itself and what they found. The Oklahoma City bombing is important for people to realize the facts of because it's such a demonstrable case of the official story being utterly false. Uh, you have to remember the Oklahoma City bombing occurred in the infancy of the Internet when the dissemination of information wasn't so rapid as it is today. If they tried something as sloppy as Oklahoma City today, it would gain a lot more exposure. And they probably learned a lot from that attack. But it is such a demonstrable case of the official story being false and a lie that it calls into question every official story for any kind of terrorist event that happens since then and in the future. Sure. Yeah. And then, so let's get back into the Oklahoma City Bombing Investigative Committee. What what journey did that take? What kind of role did State Rep. Charles Key play? And, and what did you find, uh, Mr. Phillips? 
Well, we actually, um, uh, Charles Key headed up the committee and uh, brought people on the committee, and we even hired our own investigators. Uh, we uh, gathered up uh, public funds just to, from people that would, uh, like myself or others, that would give some funds to, um, to hire investigators. And we had an office staff, and we were starting to uh, uh, pull in information. Uh, we interviewed, um, uh, I don't really know how many he could tell you, but probably got into hundreds of witnesses uh, from every area of, uh, of concern. And uh, because we could see that the government was purposely trying to cover up everything, and the state government seemed to be working with the feds in that regard, that uh, we had to go get our own investigation. Uh, and, and we did that. And we were fighting to get a grand jury to look at that. And we did. We had to fight the state all the way, every level, all the way through the state Supreme Court to get the state constitutional uh, provided a grand jury in a case like this. And um, the uh, Bob Macy was the district attorney at that time. And he fought us all the way, uh, every level. And one time in a meeting with him, uh, uh, Charles actually asked him, and you could ask Charles about this sometime, that uh, why are you fighting us every level of this? Why don't you stop fighting us? And he said, they won't let me. And Charles said, who are they? And he wouldn't say. So um, anyway, but we did take it all the way through. We did uh, get the state Supreme Court to honor our request for a grand jury. And we did have a grand jury and we obtained, I don't know what it was, a million dollars or something to help us with the grand jury. Well, lo and behold, they put the grand jury, uh, they put Bob Macy in charge of the grand jury. So they put our enemy in a sense in charge of the grand jury and then gave him the money and he proceeded to investigate us. But that's huge. You've got so many facts of the case not adding up at all in hindsight. It's clear what it was. And yet you've got these officials not caring that people in their own state and their own home area were killed from this bombing. They don't care how many lies and cover-ups are going on. He just tells uh, Key to his face that they won't let me stop basically covering this up. That's I've never heard that before. Well, the thing is, uh, people like Dale Phillips and Charles Key and other people we interviewed, they didn't start out uh, distrusting the government. They wanted truth to be to be done in this case. They were victims, many of them, the people we've interviewed, of the bombing. But when they saw that the government was not pursuing evidence, not pursuing leads, ignoring things that people had seen, manipulating reality, um, they tried to use the system. They went through the petition system. They went through the grand jury. And at every level, the government failed to abide by its own obligations to the citizens. And now, with the noble lie, at least we're reclaiming history. If we can't have some of these people in the witness stand answering harsh questions, at the very least, we can reclaim history and stop remembering the lives of those 168 people with a lie. Let's remember them with the truth and seeking real truth and justice instead of covering it up. V.Z. Lawton was is one of our best one of the committee members. You may have already interviewed uh, uh, VZ, I'm not sure. VZ's uh, pretty sick right now, probably can't be interviewed anymore. But um, he was in the building at the time that the uh, explosion went off. And he will tell you that the building was coming down before the truck bomb went off. So obviously there were armaments in the building on the columns that uh, ripped those columns apart, threw them around, that an air blast uh, wouldn't even break. An air blast couldn't break those columns, much less pull them up, twist them around, and throw them around. An air blast would have broken some windows, possibly. That's pretty well it. Sure. Uh, now, in your own role, uh, Mr. Phillips, were you ever intimidated or, or told to shut up about the case? Because we've talked to other cops who were on the scene. Don Browning, I think his name was, his life was threatened. Uh, other people were threatened during the course of the investigation and the grand jury. What did you see along those lines, sir? Actually, um, I never had that happen. I, uh, uh, so if I'm making up anything, I'd make that one up. But I, I uh, haven't uh, had that happen. And uh, I will say this, that the, the committee uh, had prayer every time we had a meeting. We had lots of meetings for six years. We had a, we had a, a protective prayer each time. 
that God would help us go forward and get the, the facts documented for the book that we have. And uh, they, to my knowledge, Charles himself was not uh, threatened. Uh, I was never threatened. Sure. And of course, prayer does work. Tell us more about the book or the report you worked on. And how did this play out through the grand jury investigation? Did they ignore the questions that you had all raised uh, in your own investigation? Or what happened from that point? No, they didn't want to know anything about our book and didn't want to know anything about our questions. <clears throat> they, uh, they didn't call me in. I was even guarded from that. Charles was called in and a couple others were called in, but uh, for questioning by the uh, grand jury and uh, the very grand jury that we got put together, uh, we got 13,500 signatures and it was only 5,000 required. And, um, but uh, they didn't want to have, they didn't want any of our questions and didn't want, uh, for that matter, any of our answers. I think this goes back to what you kind of pointed out, Holland, that at the time of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, they really felt they had control over the media. They could tell blatant lies and still manage them, make sure they had reporters and key witnesses they could control, et cetera. That was probably even less so on 9-11, even though the number of witnesses was multiplied by some factor, uh, the number of people aware of the event around the world, the number of questions, even at a heightened phase. But I think over time you do see an unraveling of the control they assumed they had in 1995, maybe still thought they had in 2001. But now we could see where the power of Internet is really eroding heavily at that. And hopefully uh, knowledge about these events is going to prevent further events in the in the future from happening. Uh, what's your take on? Well, I mean, the false flag attack, if that's what these attacks truly are, and I do personally think they are, um, is an old formula, formula let's hope. Uh, that's what they've used uh, time and time again in the past. But hopefully with the information revolution that we're catching up faster than the cover-up can extend, that we're learning faster than they can cover things up. So I'm hoping that by exposing these operations as soon as they happen and exposing ones in the past, that we are evolving hopefully past the point where they can effectively use a false flag attack against us. And if they do, it might just blow up in their face when they get exposed to the world as the frauds and the criminals and the murderers, the mass murderers they truly are. Dale Phillips, uh, what do you see for the future of the truth? Will the truth continue to come out about Oklahoma City? Uh, do you think that venue is going to be in films like A Noble Lie or in investigative bodies of the future? And where does the country go from here? Where, where's the future of these kind of horrible attacks? Well, you know, I've said forever that uh, government can be as corrupt as they want to be, and you can straighten that out. It's when your news media gets corrupt that you're dead in the water. And our country has gotten to a point now where the MSM, the mainstream media, is pretty well totally corrupt. All of them are controlled uh, by members of organizations that are international. And uh, therefore, they do what they're told. And they uh, you see it happening in this uh, election that's going on right now. You, it's, so the new, main news media is dying, though, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. It just depends on whether they can put laws in force, which, in my opinion, they're trying to do to stamp out the kind of opportunity that's going on right now with me being interviewed. Hey, what do you see for the future also of the extremism issue? So much of the white supremacist movement was supposedly brought in to the Oklahoma City attack, and we see it played out again in the Obama administration, another Democratic administration, a lot of the same officials involved, Eric Holder and others, and they still continue to pursue this line that somehow there's a cadre of extremists out in the country and on their behalf, they've got to kind of get everyone under control, ask nosy questions, put everyone under suspicion, all to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. Well, there was um, actually the week we released a noble lie in December, uh, an article came out from the uh, the Daily Beast, an organ, the online organ of Newsweek magazine, detailing the profiles and adventures of an undercover FBI agent named Matthews, who had been infiltrating the neo-Nazi and far radical right in the nineties. He'd worked for ten years as an FBI undercover informant. He is a Marine veteran of Vietnam, and he thought he was doing the right thing, but he quit. And this is actually profiled in Newsweek. He quit when he realized that. He was, the FBI's job was to actually incite these militias. I mean, the, a lot of these groups are being fed firearms 
from military bases. It's not like the some of these uh, far right militias were stealing weapons. They were actually being fed weapons to incite a fight with the neo-Nazi and far radical right and some of the militias that were associated with that, uh, truthfully or not. And the fact is that that Newsweek article, which mentioned an undercover FBI operation called PACCON, Patriot Conspiracy, which was the FBI operation to infiltrate every far-right organization in the United States in the mid-90s and implicate them in firearms and uh, f- um, firearms and explosives felonies. Um, PACCON, all mentions of PACCON were cut out of the Newsweek article. That is still sensitive. In fact, one FBI agent said PACCON will get you killed. And we believe that Oklahoma City was perhaps spawned out of Operation PACCON in the mid-90s. That's very interesting. I think it's true that the uh, what we have going on seems obvious to me that we have every form, whether it's domestic or international or otherwise, of uh, proposed terrorism that the... Um, uh, world leaders, so to speak, if you want to call them, behind the scenes are trying to scare the public into giving up rights, giving up guns, giving up any kind of protection by using the fact that there's a terrorist behind every bush and around every corner. And and it's, they're being pretty successful at it at this point. And, but I think whether it's the neo-Nazis or whether it's the skinheads or whether it's uh, all the other things we could name, all of those are being fed to the public on a basis of, uh, you know, we're going to protect you from them. So you need to give up your rights. I totally agree. And I think that's why A Noble Lie is still important. Not only is it a well-made film, very captivating, hit on a lot of details I wasn't aware of, even though I kind of got the larger picture. It was one of these false flags. But the fact is we see them continuing to try to take away our rights uh, under whatever pretext. And then when people shout out about it, uh, cite the Constitution, et cetera, they've got these weird extremist uh, cutouts they could put to deflect the public, keep the public from embracing the very people uh, trying to defend the Constitution as they destroy it. Uh, you, your closing comments, and we thank you for joining us, of course. Mine? Uh, both of you guys. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Well, uh, it's good that you brought that up because uh, actually this anniversary, the 17th anniversary on Thursday, April 19th at 7 p.m., We Are Change Oklahoma is going to be passing out 500 free copies of A Noble Lie to everyone who's participating in the anniversary ceremonies uh, downtown at the memorial because we don't want them to remember the slain with a lie. We want to reclaim the truth from history. I very much appreciate the work um, of the group that has taken our book, uh, The Final Report that we worked uh, six years on and gathered up several hundred thousand dollars of uh, money from the public and hired our own investigators and worked very hard uh, to put together. Um, the, I, very, I very much appreciate uh, them uh, putting this uh, movie together, which is kind of based on that book, or at least uh, most of the information or a lot of information from that book. And uh, dragging up the fact that uh, this kind of thing can happen uh, and the the less that is done to come against uh, government lies, the more is going to take place in the future. I can remember when I believe Charles was on uh, the O'Reilly show and uh, they they gave him a list of questions and then came back and when they really started questioning you, we asked him about this, but they... They changed the questions totally of what they asked him than what they told him they were going to ask him. Uh, That's not a nice thing to do. But anyway, at the end, when um, uh, he got started talking about uh, the Middle East and so forth and so on, which they had never uh, brought up in the questioning, he made the statement that if you don't, if we don't handle this case right, and we don't try to uh, dig into it and protect the public, with information that comes from this case, worse things will happen. Voila, 9-11. Mm-hmm. The final report for the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee actually came out three weeks before 9-11. I'm not saying the two are related, but the fact that 9-11 happened kind of drew attention away from the conclusions of the bombing committee. And, and that story was ignored because that was the compilation of years of effort of disproving the official story. And like Dale said, we based a lot of the information in a noble lie upon the final report of the bombing commission. 
It is interesting, though, that they look for any opportunity to give closure to the issue and forget about the questions that were so painstakingly drawn out. And uh, we appreciate you both for joining us. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Dale Phillips. And uh, we'll continue to cover the Oklahoma City issue and this great film, which we also have at Infowars.com. And as you pointed out, the anniversary for OKC is coming up this week, right? Yes, this Thursday, We Are Change Oklahoma is going to be passing out 500 free copies of the movie to everyone going inside for the uh, anniversary ceremonies to try to uh, let them know that there are unanswered questions about the bombing and the people holding these anniversary ceremonies are not remembering the dead truthfully. Uh, they're remembering them with a lie, and that's not right. Thanks again for joining us, and that's all for the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back again tomorrow. Don't forget to reach out at prisonplanet.tv and subscribe to support us, or just tell everyone you know about the broadcast. You can find us on the YouTube, the Alex Jones channel as well. Thanks for watching, and good night.